Welcome to Monday Morning Coffee with Inside the Firm. Each week, our hosts will be interviewing local, regional, and national business leaders to give you an inside peek into how they lead their business to success in the ever-competitive business climate. Welcome to Monday Morning Coffee with Joe Vargas. Joe and his wife, Casey, moved to Williston from Fargo, North Dakota in July of 2010. In 20, January 2014, Joe was working on an oil well location when he, was hit, when, when he was hit on the head, shoulder, and then foot with equipment. His left foot was then amputated, and, he, and then the decision was made to do an under-knee amputation. Within three months, Joe was fitted into a prosthetic leg and returned to work in March or April of 2014. After returning to the gym, he realized the equipment that was in the local gyms was not handicapped accessible and decided that when he received the settlement for his injury, he wanted to open up his own gym, providing the equipment to everyone. From people with missing limbs to professional bodybuilders, the pit was opened in November of 2018 and has been growing every single day. Joe, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, Why don't you peel back back the onion about Joe a little bit. Tell us, tell me, especially because I've never met you before, so I'm happy to meet you. Uh, peel back the onion a little bit. Where, where's Joe? Who is Joe Vargas? Where does he come from? And how did he get to Williston, North Dakota? I'm originally from Texas, from a little town of uh, Creasel Springs. Oh. Eat the mic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was where I was born. And then uh, my parents ended up going to uh, Minnesota. They were migrant workers. Oh, no kidding. Yep. So they ended up doing a migrant worker circuit. They'd go through Texas, Iowa for the corn, uh, Minnesota for the sugar beets, um, grain. So they traveled around a lot. So what they ended up doing that way, then they ended up just deciding after they had me, I was just, they wanted to settle down. So they settled down in a little town in Minnesota called Dilworth. Okay, I know where that is. Yeah, yep. e- East Fargo, right? Basically Fargo, Moorhead, yep. Dilworth. It's between Detroit Lakes and uh, Moorhead there. It's just a little hick town. And then uh, we just ended up growing up there. Then next thing I knew, I met my wife in Grand For- in Fargo. She was going to school in Grand Forks. And we got together. Then she's like, we're moving to Williston. <laughs> Never knew about Williston. Was that, was that where her family was from and yeah, that's what brought you up there? Family's from, her whole family's from Williston. And we decided to move here and we ended up having kids and been here ever since. Okay. So Yeah. So mom and dad, when they settled down then, was th- th- what did they settle down to do? They just, my dad ended up turning in to be a farmer, and he ended up working with one of the farm guys that he ended up uh, working for, the migrant workers, and he ended up staying there, and he just retired from there. Is there anything that you that your mom and dad maybe instilled in you or kind of set, you, set your path straight, you know, just and led you to sort of this kind of path? I mean, you're obviously a guy who works hard on himself, on his family, and his business. Yep. It's obvious. Work ethics. My parents were, they're pretty low income people, so we pretty much had to do everything. And he, my dad was a mechanic and he taught me how to do everything. And he just showed me, work your butt off. You work your butt off, you'll get to what you want. And that's how I came up with this. I just worked my butt off and told myself, one day I'm going to have a gym. And this was way before I even met my wife. That you, you, so you had the dream about having a gym even oh, before, way before my were, wife. You, were you athletic? And is that what kind of led I to it? I just kind of liked to work out. I just okay. liked the uh, work ethics of it and how to do it. And next thing, I, I wasn't serious about it. I wasn't really, I knew how to work out, but I knew how, to, there's a difference from working out and working out. There's okay. two, two worlds to it. Tell us about that. What, what is the difference? Work, when I first started working out, I just lifted heavy. Didn't know about form, didn't know about eating proper, didn't know any of that. I just went to the gym and wanted to be that guy to lift heavy weights. Uh huh. And then pretty soon I started shaping my body a little different, and I ran into a couple guys that were into bodybuilding, into the fitness world, and they showed me a little bit of ropes, and ever since then I was addicted. I was addicted to the gym. I went from a small, skinny guy, about 180 pounds, Rip chisel look had the pretty boy effect. Mm-hmm. I didn't want that. I wanted to be the big guy, you know, working out, and that's what happened, and that's where I'm at now. I just love it. It's it's a drug of choice. It's amazing. Yeah, and a healthy one too. Obviously, it is. It's right? Really healthy. Yeah. Yep. What what about? Uh, there's a lot of a lot of people that listen to this podcast are probably white collar business people, you know, and I, so a lot of them, I, even myself, don't really know the specifics about the oil field. So when you moved out to here. How did you get into the oil field, and then what? What actually? What were you doing that led to the injury? Okay, I ended up uh, coming out here. I had mechanical background, so that helped me get into the oil field pretty easy. And uh, next thing I know, 
I just started moving up the ranks, started doing, uh, just they gave me opportunities, I took it and I fulfilled them and next thing I know I was a, a foreman and next thing I knew I was, I was a field supervisor and it was just one of those things, I just worked my ass off to get to there where I wanted to be. So, and what was the other question? When you, yeah, what specifically were you doing in the field that, oh, that I was led field, to your injury? I was yeah. a field supervisor out there. We were just tearing down a pump jack and one of the, we were tearing down one of the beams and one of the beams had a, a, min, a, a faulty welding on one of the things that holds the, the pitman arm into the uh, equalizer. And next thing you know, we were taking it off and that's all I really remember. I got hit by it. And then I woke up at the hospital. I, I remember it happened at noon, right after lunch. And then I remember waking up at the hospital around 9 o'clock after having, I think it was two or three surgeries. And that's all I really remember about the accident. And so it wasn't really, and obviously, since it sounds like, you know, there was a settlement that we talked about yep. at, at the beginning. And so it wasn't, wasn't your fault or anything like that. And people nope. hear these these horror stories about how dangerous oil field is obviously your walking talking version yeah of that <laughs> yeah <laughs> could have been worse the doctor said it could have been really really bad but one thing the doctor said, told me that it could have saved my life was that i was lifting i was in that healthy oh I was, no kidding you know like how people sometimes get shot and the, the guys that are more fit almost feels like they have a bulletproof vest and they survive more than a, a heavier set guy mm -hmm. so i've noticed that that helped out and but he goes, that, that probably saved your life. You weren't an average person. You, you could have taken the, the pound pretty good. But How long were you in the hospital for? I was in the hospital for two weeks. And then I, I got sent home. And the funniest thing about being sent home was the day I got out of surgery, I, was, I told them, put me in a wheelchair, take all the IVs out. I want to go start working out. They're like, you just got surgery. You need to settle <laughs> down. So I gave him one day, and the next day I said, I'm going to the gym. Where's the gym at? I was in my wheelchair. I'm just going down. I started working out as much as I possibly could. And then the day I got released from the hospital, the first place I came, I went right to the gym. I didn't even go home. Wow. I went right to the gym. How'd your wife feel working. about that? She, she knew me. She knew my <laughs> lifestyle. <laughs> and it was so awesome because everybody at the gym treated me like a family. If I needed something, they would bring me something. I'd, I'd sit there. They'd bring me everything I wanted. And I was amazing about the gym family that I had at that time. And this wasn't this wasn't your gym, right? No, nope, this was in my gym. Okay, it was at a, a local gym here in town. Yeah, and then and then I thought about it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to open up a gym for people that have disabilities because half these gym no no gym in town helps people with disabilities, and they don't cater to them. And I wanted to cater to them because I'm one of them now. Yeah, you know, and it was hard, and I understand how how hard it is to work out with a disability. But in my mind, I said, keep going, keep going. Nothing's going to hold me back. They told me I wasn't going to walk for a year after I got out of the hospital. I said, no. I, get, I, I told my boss, I'll be back and work in three months. I was one day shy of Seriously. Being three months. I was back in the oil field working with a prosthetic leg. What was, so, I mean, you, you sound like a very optimistic person, so, I, but I, I, it, what, was there a low point at any time? And then what pulled you out of that if there was, maybe your the, lowest point? I think the lowest point was that I couldn't run with my kids. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do all the activities that other dads could do with their kids. It, that's, but my kids don't, they didn't think, they didn't look at me any less. Well, my one daughter calls it my robot leg. Nice. And she loves it. You yeah. Know? <laughs> You're but bionic. Was, yep. And that was probably the only lowest point I had was that ability. But then we kind of figured out other ways. And then they ended up coming up with a different leg for me to do more activities, more, um, I call it, uh, I can't remember, more of like an active leg where I could do more things with them. I could run with it. I could actually swim with it we could jet ski now we could do a lot more things with it and that once we got that leg it changed everything and nothing was untamable for me to do now mm -hmm. so what was it like starting this gym then because you had to wait and how and so you went back to work three months after your injury then what was the time span to, to work through that settlement and how, how did that process all shake that out? took about almost six years to get that settlement wow so we were just kind of just fighting it um, we weren't really fighting it we were just waiting and and then we just ended up 
I told the wife, I said, as soon as we get that, I'm going to do this. So we started prepping before we even got the money. We started looking into it, what it would take, how much it would take. And that's what we did. We just took it step by step. And then when it came, we just pulled the trigger. Did you already have the spots picked out and everything? No, because we didn't know how much money we were getting, what what we were going to do with it and how we were going to do with it. And then once we knew we were getting it, that's when we really got serious into looking into it. But I was doing research before... While I was laying in bed, kind of at the hospital, I was already researching in my head, looking on the internet. I had all the time in the world in my hands. Yeah. So I just kept looking into it and see what it would cost. And then once we got the settlement, the wife goes, well, let's do this. Then me and a couple of my buddies, we went and took a tour. We hit every little mom and pa gym in California, Texas, Florida. I went to talk to all the owners and asked them what the pros and cons of about a gym and what I should do. And I learned a lot from them. What are some of the big cons that stick out in your mind and that maybe that you've avoided here? The, you know, that, that they, that the other gym owner, I think that was brilliant to probably do that is to go out and understand, yep. especially further away too. Then, I mean, it's not like you're asking people in town. Yep, right? Exactly. Yeah. The pros were like the, the good thing about opening a, a gym, they said was helping people out, seeing them come in one day and leaving a whole different person out the other day. And then they come in, they, they, they give you like, uh, um, they give you props for like, you know, thank you for helping me out. Thank you for, you know, show me around the gym, keep me motivated, keep, keep coming back. And the owners are like, that's the best feeling in the world when you can help one person out of 10 people change their lives mm-hmm. for the long run. And the, the cons were, there's no money. You can't become a millionaire <laughs> in a gym, owning a gym. But they said, the way they talked to me was like they were looking at me and there four of the five that I talked to, they looked at me, they said, You're not about the money. You're right. more about helping people out. You're more about living your goal in life. You know, this is what you want to do. So you're the the type of person that's actually gonna make the money because you're not looking for the money. You're more towards the helping people out. Mm-hmm. And he goes, Some of these people come in, they think they're gonna become millionaires and then they don't and they didn't like that. You know, they're just for in it for the money. They're not in it to work out, to do anything. They just want the money. Yeah. And with me, I'm in here every day. I work out with all my, my clients. I work out with all everybody in here. The pit is a whole different world. We're more of a gym family. You walk in here, you feel, you know, you know everybody. Everybody helps you out. They push you to your limits. It's almost kind of like if you remember Cheers back in the day, yeah. the, the show, that's what it feels like when you walk in here. People know your name. They help you out. Even with new people. It's it's a whole different world. Did you have to work on that skill as a business owner and just a person, or did you already kind of have it and it just kind of grew? I think it just kind of grew. My mom said I could get along with anybody. Everywhere I go, I'd always meet people. Mm-hmm. They're always they, they were always drawn to me for some reason. I still don't get why, but it, everybody tells me it's just people get drawn to you for some reason. I don't understand that either, but it's just one of those things. Mm-hmm. And t- tell us tell us about Pitt then. So I mean, how many square feet do you have, and was it easy to find the space? In, in this town in particular? Or? Uh, there was a lot of shops, but the number one thing that all the gym owners told me was location is top priority. If you have a best one of the good locations, you'll, you'll do a lot better than having a location that people have to actually drive 20 minutes to to go. Sure. And then the size of the building is about, I think it's about 8,000 square footage. And uh, we do have a full kitchen prep in here that now we're starting to do. Yeah, uh, tell us about that. That was interesting when I came, when I came in before we started podcasting yep. here today. What is the kitchen all about? The kitchen, we're going to start doing like bulk meals, clean meals for families and uh, people that are in the fitness industry, like for a pound of chicken, pound of steak, for people to grab and go. Because mm. we have a lot of oil field people that still come in here. They don't have time to go shopping. Mm-hmm. They don't have time. They barely got time to just eat and sleep. And they come here and work out, so it's kind of a convenience for them. Or you could order online for like a week in advance. We just throw them in the freezer, throw them in the microwave, and cook. I mean, it's a it's a convenience. It's it's a lot of things that people don't understand. I know because I worked in oil field for almost eleven years. Oh sure. You go spend thirty dollars on a bunch of junk food at the grocery store, yeah. or at a stops, or at a gas station. You come here and you spend thirty dollars, you get healthy, and you know what you're getting. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to just help people out in all kinds of ways here. How did you, are there, are there a lot of gyms doing that? Or are you guys? We are the only gym in town that does prep meals out of a gym and, and sell supplements, top line of supplements in our store. Very cool. So what's, uh, what was it like getting your first clientele then? I mean, was it, did you already be, did you you already have gym rat friends and you're like, come to my gym? Yep. I already had a bunch. I've been here almost 11 years and I met people from all over 
pretty much every gym in town I went to and I worked out and we just became friends and that's how I met half all my friends now was through the gym. And as soon as I told them I was going to open up a gym and I gave them the idea of what I was doing, everybody was stoked. People that I didn't even know were message me when is the place going to be open what's what you know because i'd leave the garage doors open as we were working on it people drive by they're like wow this is neat this is going to be different and that's what i did i ended up just and then as soon as we said we were i wasn't even open yet and i had probably close to 30 members already wow just people coming as i didn't even have equipment here all the equipment here but they said i'm ready can i come in i said sure you know go ahead we'll start doing it it was just it blew my mind honestly i wake up every day blessed knowing that this just went to a whole nother level. It was just amazing. Yeah. It probably doesn't feel like work for you, right? I mean, honestly, it's, it's like a, la- no, it sounds it like it's a labor of love. The work is behind the, behind the doors of ordering. Oh yeah. On the phone. <laughs> People don't understand it. They think I just come in here and work out. <laughs> they see the good part, but yeah. they don't see behind the door part where, you know, where you have to uh, talk to distributors, all this stuff, or people trying to sell you stuff, put stuff in your place. You know, that's the stuff. That's the other Dark side, I call it. <laughs> yeah, maybe you could talk about that a little bit more too. I, you know, it's it's obvious that you walk through your gym, everything matches. It looks it looks really cool. It's nice and clean. If somebody was to open up their own gym, or if if they wanted to kind of follow in your footsteps and they were looking looking in whatever town they're looking at, you know, is there a certain amount of? I mean, it's a highly. It seems like it's a highly competitive space, right? So, like, how do you find where you are? Where how do you assess where in a, in a in particular town of? I, I could there's still room for me there's yeah. still room for me to do this actually I am helping out one of my gym members he's actually opening up a gym in um, spearfish actually oh no kidding and me and my wife are actually help, giving him a hand to get going to helping him point him down the right direction because we went we went through so many you know other places and we finally found what uh, the good places to talk to the good businesses to talk to and he's actually opening up in Jim and Spearfish, and we, he just called me today, and we're going to help him out get get started. And he was actually one of my gym members, and he was, he's actually going to buy the same equipment that I have, and he's going to move it down there, but not as big, just to start off. So I think that was awesome that we actually helped another guy fulfill his dream to, to do the same thing I does, and he loves to work out too. Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't for me to show him, kinda, show him that it could be done, he probably would have never done it, and that's what he told me. Oh, that's that's cool. Yeah, a lot awesome. of people, yeah, a lot of people think I think businesses are like this magical thing that's real hard to start and everything. And I think a lot of it is like drive. You got to have capital, right? Yep. You, you ended up with some capital to be yep. able to do it. That's some of the big hurdles. Yep. What else do you guys do besides you know you do the food prep? Obviously, gym is the core of it. Competitions, I hear. Competitions. We just went to Fargo and we cleaned house. We won seven of the eight classes out there, and two of our girls took overall in the show, and. Uh, yeah, it was amazing just to see us go together as a team. Yeah, what does that mean for, again, I'm not a guy that goes to the gym every day, so what does it mean when, because you guys are coming out as like this is pit gym's team sort yep. of thing? Is it is it, is it is it help with branding and then people recognize that name, maybe come back around? Yep, that's what we do. Like It really helped us out. Like we, I love that the oil field is here because everybody comes from everywhere. Yeah. And it's amazing to see my apparel in California at another gym. Oh, that's cool. Or Florida or Pennsylvania or anywhere. It just blows my mind that people actually represent the pit of Williston in their own states, in their own gyms. And it's amazing. I get pictures taken all the time of these people at a gym in Florida. It's, it blows my mind. Whoever thought that a small town gym would be nationwide. Mm-hmm. It's just amazing. What do you guys do right now to, you know, you had your core, you talked about all your, all your, a lot of friends, decide, you know, they were like, well, yeah, we're going to come to your gym when you start up. And, you know, you, you built the hype uh, for anybody who's listening. The town or the road that I drove in on is one of the main drags, Second Avenue on, on, on Williston. So high, a lot of traffic, like yep. you said, location. Yep. What are you guys doing now? Do you guys do a lot of social media? Social media, the best way to go, uh, advertising and now that this Fargo shows, now that Williston's on the map because of the Fargo show oh, really? of the bodybuilding show, yeah, it was pretty nice to have them come and say, "Now we got to watch out for the pit out of Williston because you guys are bringing a lot." We do have powerlifting team out of here too that we just three weeks ago they were in Fargo and they all took first in their classes, men and women actually broke their state records. So we sponsor a lot of teams from bodybuilding to powerlifting, and it's just. 
it's just blowing my mind. It still awes me every day that we could do that. You know that we brought this to Williston to actually do all this. You know for the community and for the town. Would you Would you ever consider franchising? That's on the horizon. Okay, <laughs> we will see, but I don't want to talk about too much about that. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, <laughs> fair enough. Because I feel like that's one way. I mean, did any of the other business owner, the other gym owners that you went and interviewed to begin with, are like, look, if you ever do want to actually make some money, yeah, you know, it's about franchising. And a lot repeating. of those gyms that the local gyms that I went to, the Mon Pod, they don't really franchise as much. They may have one, one, one or two of them, but it wasn't bad. But they like to keep it homegrown. It's hard to find um, location, and then you have to spend more time. You know, some of them just rather just stick to one and just make that the best one ever. Mm -hmm. But it it may be possible. We'll see. You know, it's times have changed. Yeah, and towns are growing, and we'll see what happens. But it is on the horizon. Uh, North Dakota, as I understand it, is one of these states that was there wasn't a lot of mandates that came out with COVID or anything like that. Is it, did it affect you guys at all? How, we, how did that work out? We did get shut down for 43 days. Oh, seriously? Yep. So we were shut down for 43 days, but we ended up, uh, they allowed us to have the storefront open, so we still got to sell supplements. And that was, that was about it. But the day they let us open up, you should have seen the line coming into my gym. People were calling me every day. Are you ready? Is it open yet? Can we come in yet? Is it? And another thing about the gym that the COVID didn't understand, the people that shut businesses down was, some people need this as therapy. Some yes. of these people need it for norm to be normal, to function. And I had two of my buddies that I knew. They were they were uh, they were stuck on drugs back in the day. Mm-hmm. And the thing that got them out was the gym. They found their their little outlet through the gym. And then when they shut the gym down, I tried to contact these two of my friends. One wasn't doing too bad. The other one actually went back to drugs and now he's back in the penitentiary because he couldn't go back to his normal life his normal routine got screwed up because he couldn't go and work out and be around people once you be around the people here it's all about it energy everything but when you're out there and you're around your old crew mm-hmm. what's it going to draw you back into yeah you know 100 percent. and that kind of hurt me because i couldn't get him in here and i it just sucked that people don't understand that this is a lifestyle this is therapy this is a lot to a lot of people yeah. Once you get into this world. Yeah, I could imagine it's probably probably maybe it's for a lot of people it's their high point of their day, right? It is. I mean they get their they adren- look forward to come here. They they're just counting town, you know. Mm-hmm. Some people still work and they'll swing in and just say hi and just walk through, you know, talk to me for a little bit, then they'll go back from their lunch and go back to work and then I'll see them back in three hours working out at the gym, you know. Yeah. We have a lot of people just swing by and just hang out. It's it's a family gym. I love it. It's, yeah, it's a different kind of style of gym. Did you find? Uh, did you find that? Did membership go down because of COVID, or or were people like locked in their houses and then they did membership go up because more people wanted to get involved? Or After it- when it the memberships didn't go down at all, but it, as soon as the COVID, as soon as everybody got to go back and everybody got to work out again, the membership skyrocket roofed out because they showed that. Being healthier will help you out with this COVID. Mm -hmm. And that just exploded right after we reopened back up. It just got crazy. But now people understand that being semi-healthy and eating good helps you out with your immune system and everything that this COVID is affecting. Yeah. Or getting injured. Or getting shot, like you said. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And we do have members in here that I actually have two guys that lost their arm in oil field that they actually work out here. Oh, cool. Full circle then for you. Yep. And they love it. They love it. As soon as uh, like, I even have a kid come up from Walkford, he lost his leg in, a, in an accident, and he came up here just to meet me, and we worked out together, and it was amazing. This kid was just like, I didn't think it would be possible to be back to be a normal person. Mm-hmm. You know, We'll never be normal, but we will feel like we're normal because we could do all the activities and be the person we want to be through that. So, Tell me about the, the ADA part of your gym. So... What what does it separate your gym as far as ADA meaning uh, Americans with Disability Act? Oh, so the, the handicap stuff. Sorry about yeah. that. Uh, what 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 does separate yours from other gyms? And like, is it just certain equipment that you're buying it to is, make it's it? It's a certain equipment that I ended up getting. Was um, it actually the equipment that I got actually helps you build muscle around the muscles that we didn't really know we had muscles to build. Like if um, it strengthened the muscles around your weaker muscles. 
And then when you could build those muscles up quicker and faster, your ability to get back to normal life would be a lot easier. I noticed that when I was working out at local gyms here, I'd work out, but I wasn't fully getting the full muscle development that I needed to strengthen my leg up for walking. And then when I found this equipment, this equipment actually isolates the muscles that you need to really hit hard to build that, to, to restain everything back. It's amazing how. So it's so it's not necessarily that it's a it's a piece of equipment that somebody in a wheelchair can can access compared to if they it was a different you know regular just for the average person. That's not what it is. It's about. It's more of just these special machines. These special machines that isolate the muscle a lot better than all the machines that we I've ever seen. These are machines are state of the art equipment. That's amazing. I'm so glad that I went with this company, and it's all one brand. Arsenal Equipment is top of the line. They don't get any better than this. Yeah. And I've known that when I posted that I was going to open up this gym, it's equipment that nobody's ever seen. I have never seen this, and I've been in the lifting world for about 15 years. And then once I saw it, I was like, wow. I was even confused how to use these machines. How did you find them? Just a lot of research? I Actually, when I went and did that tour with my friends, we, had a, we were at a mom and gym, and uh, they had two pieces of this equipment. And the gym owner goes, man, if I had my whole gym with this arsenal equipment – it would change the whole lifting perspective of the area. And I was like, huh, I thought about it. A light hit me, and I was ne- next thing I know, I'm flying back, and I'm coming home, and I ended up calling him, and I said, hey, send me a catalog of what you got, and let me, we'll go from there. And then I actually just bought everything they had. <laughs> oh, yeah? I bought their whole catalog, <laughs> some, some even two of everything they had. Yeah. And every time they come out with a new piece, I, we got a relationship with uh, one of my, the reps there, so as soon as something's coming out, calls me up right away. Hey, are you interested? If you're not, if you are, we're going to put you right on top of the list. You'll be the first person in the States to have it at your gym. What If somebody's if somebody's listening to this and they're finally ready to get off their butt and start going to a gym routinely, what do you recommend they uh, – and maybe they don't live in Williston, right? Maybe they live somewhere else. What should they be looking for in a gym? Like if it was you, just if you could pretend like you – you know everything, but at the same time, you're newbie. What do you, what do you look for in a gym? I would walk into a gym and see what they got, how they treat you, how everything is set up. The vibe is 100% what makes a gym good. And if you got the right vibe and the right people around you, that would be the best way to go. Some, some of these gyms that I've been to, you walk in, they make you feel like you're an outsider. They don't even give you the time of chance. At the pit... We welcome you here. If you don't understand anything, and if we see you doing something wrong, well, some of us will come over and say, hey, you know, try it this way. You know, we, everybody's got so much to knowledge in here. We got 15 years of bodybuilding, powerlifting, um, all kinds of, like, you know, all kinds of people that know more knowledge than anybody in this one gym that will help anybody out. And there's a lot of big people walking around, a lot of big boys. Yeah, yeah. But... Those are the best ones to have because they know they've been around the game long enough where they could teach you how to do different workouts with different equipment. You know, other places I've been to, they don't show you nothing. They give you that dirty eye or they'll just look at you, you know. But here it's a different world. It's awesome. What kind, What about supplements? You know, I feel like uh, uh, a lot of people, when they start going into anything like this, they feel like they got to go zero to 100. Yeah. Instead of just maybe zero to one, two, three, four, five, you know, how how do you kind of what advice do you give? Just how do why do you walk into it, or is that just it that you no, don't need to go to one hundred? You don't need to go to one hundred. The biggest part is eating. A lot of people don't understand. You have to eat, eat good food, clean food. Supplements, they're fillers. If you don't have time, take a lot of supplements. But if you can, a lot of it, you should get all of it from your food. Really. But a lot, it's hard to eat a lot of that food, so that's why they came up with supplements. So you could throw in supplements in there, but get everything you can out of your food. What do you? What do you? And what do you? What is your definition of clean food? Everybody's got their definition. Um, I pretty much eat like chicken, turkey, rice, broccoli, um, just clean food. Nothing that has a lot of preservatives. A lot of it you should be cooking. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't buy all this stuff that's already pre-made and then you just throw it in the microwave. Sounds like no red meat. Is that a no, thing? No, I love steak. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as I'm not as cut as all everybody else, but I still like to eat. <laughs> yeah. But but is that is that a reason why people cut out beef? Because there's so much fat in it. Is that yeah, the primary sometimes, reason? Sometimes, but. In steak, there's a lot of creatine. There's a lot of oh, okay. a lot of food, a lot of you know supplements in that food. There's a lot of stuff that people should, but 
you just got to watch what you eat. A lot of it, and if you don't eat right, you're not going to see all the results in the gym that you should be seeing because of the food intake. Like for me, I eat about six meals a day. Every two to three hours, I'm eating. Just to, that's, my body got used to it. Mm -hmm. That's the way it goes. Mm -hmm. The harder you work out, the more you're going to have to eat, you know. But if you want to see results, eat clean, work out, and have a routine, and you'll start seeing results. And some people get results quicker than other people, but your time will come. Just don't give up. Just keep it. I hate when people come in here and work out for a month and they don't see nothing. Some of these guys, it took us 10 years to get where we're at. Wow. It doesn't happen overnight. And a lot of people say drugs. Oh, you guys are doing drugs. Okay. Drugs is, that's the fallback. Mm -hmm. You still got to put in the time. You still got to come in here consistently. You can't just depend on drugs. A lot of people, they cheat their way there. And I, I hate when people say, oh, you take a lot of drugs. No, we don't. We're in here two to three hours every day. Even if we're sick, we come in here, you know. That's the way it is. Even if you're sick. Even if you're sick, you're coming <laughs> in here. You may not have the best workout, but you still. You still get something out, If yeah. I take more than two days off, I feel like I shrunk. I feel like, Oh, you know, I believe that, You know, yeah. it's one of those things. I know we didn't, but it's just, it's a, it's our lifestyle. It's just the way it is. Yeah. It sounds and, like a lot of fun. Yeah. And you don't have to come in here every day to get that. Three times a week, I would guarantee, I'd say about three times a week. You know, that's a good maintained style of getting, you know, back into shape. And then once you start seeing your muscles shape and you start seeing your body change, that's where the addiction comes in. That's where you want to come in here harder, longer, you know, change your routine. So, mm -hmm. Joe, this has been awesome. One, one last question I'd like to ask everybody before uh, I let you go. And that is if you could go back in time, if you knowing what you know now, right, you've been in the you've been in the game for a while. You've been in business for a while. You're growing, you're thriving. Knowing what you know now, if you could go back in time right when you started this business, what is one piece of advice you give yourself? And I know that's a tough one. Everybody, everybody a really has a pause. To go back in time yeah. to see what I would change. I don't know if I'd change anything. I honestly like where I'm at. I honestly like where we're going. Uh huh. You know, we did have our ups and downs, but it, who does it? You know. But I'm just saying that. I don't think I would. It's going great. It's going. It's going where I wanted to that's go. That's awesome. No regrets. I love living yeah, life like that. I do. I, I have no regrets. Yeah, even we're if at. there's the bad things, right? Like you talked about. Yeah. The only bad thing I had was to lose a leg, but like my dad said, everything's been for a reason. If I probably would have never done that, this place would have never existed. Exactly. Or it would have taken a lot longer for me to get it. But it was going to happen sooner or later. It just happened sooner than later. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. You truly broke the leg for sure, right? Yeah. So with that old quickly. Oh, this is, this has been great, Joe. T tell us if everybody's listening, if they're ever driving through or they want to look you guys up. Um, if they ever see Pitt uh, some other in some other gym like you talked about, how, how do they? How can they find and follow you guys? We have uh, Instagram Pitt House of Gains, and then we're on Facebook as Pitt House of Gains, and then uh, our address is thirteen sixteen Second Avenue, uh, South uh, in Williston, right across from Taco John's and uh, Simonson's next to Pet Store. If you live in Williston, there you go. <laughs> and then uh, we're twenty four seven. The gym is twenty four seven access. Storefronts open from 10 to 7. And if you need to come in after hours, I know a lot of people don't get off at 7 o'clock. I have my number on the door. It's 701-388-2947. That's my personal number. Give me a call. If I'm not in here working out at 7, I'm usually here from 7 to 10 every night. And if I'm not here, give me a call. I'm a few minutes away. I'll meet you here if you need to come in after hours. I work with everybody. So, Very cool. Thanks, Joe. Thanks. Appreciate it.